Virgin Airlines, a very, very charismatic uh, guy, billionaire, of course, and uh, very apt for this class, right? We are talking about design and analysis of algorithms where we are looking at the time complexity, storage complexity, and so on. OK, so as as we get more and more uh, in depth into into the course here, course material, always keep this in mind, right? Complexity is really your enemy, right? It's very easy to make it complicated. And it's very hard to make it something simple. Uh, always remember that, right? And a related quote that I often give to my students is, uh, uh, I like the KISS strategy. So what is the KISS strategy here? Kiss and take single. Okay. Kiss strategy is uh, keep it simple, stupid, right? Keep it simple. My, I'm having problem with the uh, space, space bar button. Keep it simple, stupid. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So. That is today's quote. Now let me ask the participants, the students. Generally what we do when we start off a class, I always say, hey, do you have any questions from previous classes? So we'll take care of some housekeeping here. And then we will go back to uh, the class here. Any questions so far? Or all is good. OK, I'm looking at SVECW, OK? Do you guys have any questions? Or is it all crystal clear? It's it's too easy for you so far? OK, uh, how many of you have reviewed a, a chapter, the, the slide deck related to object-oriented uh, design? I said I will be skipping those slides. I just posted them in the community. I wanted you to review those things. Has anyone reviewed object-oriented design slides? There were two slide decks there. The image that I'm seeing is SVECW. If you didn't see it uh, because you are busy watching some latest release of a movie or something like that, it's okay. But let me know. It's impossible to cover all the slides, right? So I want uh, a collaboration between you and me. So go ahead and review review uh, those slides um, if you have not already reviewed and then uh, come back uh, post yes. some questions in the community if you have any questions yes. okay somebody said yes okay, yes. okay. okay the other thing yes. is the, yes. what i want to tell you somebody is talking are they talking to me or they're talking internally let me mute Chirala. OK. Uh, if you if you are talking to the class, go ahead. You can unmute yourself and talk. OK, in the community, I have 119. Uh, oh, I don't like that color. Let me change the color. We have 119 registrations. in the community. So 119 is a good number compared to last time, but I think that is still a low number considering how many colleges are have signed up for this class. So faculty members, actually faculty members because students, students, I'm typing it here so that way everyone can see it, right? Students, by Friday, you have to uh, subscribe to the community, OK? If not, it will be closed. Closed meaning I, I can make it admin approved only, OK? It will be closed, right? And then what are the consequence if you do not join, right? Your risk 
you are risking ten percent of the grade. And you will not have access to the material. Okay, that's a big, uh, big 10% uh, of the grade and automatic. Uh, I do not know how the grading system is in India. Here, 90 and above, we typically give A grade, right? So if you lose 10%, you risk losing your A grade in the class. Fair enough. So faculty members, you can encourage them to join by tomorrow. And uh, I have not received the rosters from all the colleges yet. Uh, by the way, students, this is not just keeping you honest. Keep ourselves honest too. So this is for faculty members. Please send me rosters. Since we are giving a deadline to students, we should have our own deadline too, right? Please send me rosters by Friday. That is tomorrow. I think that's a pretty easy thing to do. Uh, I've shown you some examples of how I received the rosters. Just a simple Excel spreadsheet. Well, their name and their email ID and things like that. OK, <clears throat> any questions, comments? OK, somebody has uh, a question regarding grading. Go ahead. Put it in chat or you can you can unmute and say it. <laughs> JNTUV has a question on grading. Go ahead. Let me Hello. unmute Jay. Hello. Chapandi. Chapandi. OK, Pragati is not able to hear me. But remember Pragati, I told you that I did not see you on audio yet. So I think there is an audio problem on your end. So Pragati, let me put one second. Pragati, your audio has an issue. OK. OK, Pragati is not able to hear me, but everyone else seems to be hearing me. Um, JNT, we had a doubt regarding grading. Go ahead. JNT, we let me unmute you. OK, I unmuted you, JNT, we go ahead. Sir, good morning, sir. Good morning, Lendi Institute. Sure. Sir. Actually, we had uh, already university grading policy, sir. And uh, uh, so that grading policy is uh, 25 percentage for the mid sem and 5 percentage for the assignment and 70 percentage for the end sem. And any yeah, subjects, uh, any subjects, yes, sir. That is a university grading policy, sir. And uh, your grading policy is something different from whatever the university grading policy, sir. And so, which one we should follow, sir? My rule is very simple. If I am the professor teaching, you should follow my grading policy, right? But, <laughs> but having said that, <laughs> because in this country, professors have all the freedom. Sir, and one more thing, actually, uh, Midsem is uh, now scheduled uh, after this Sankranti, sir. And uh, uh, according my, my to the university my, schedule, yeah, yeah. Believe me, um, you can do all the other midterms. My midterm will be when I think the students are ready. When I give my midterm is up to me. OK, and then my midterms, the students should be doing in teams of two. OK, so I've already established these things when I taught the first class also. So don't worry. They can take their other midterms in the universities. Our midterm would be different. We'll follow our own schedule. Sir, actually, this is a compulsory subject for the students, sir. So uh, what they are asking is, like, we, if we have to write, already they are having six subjects, sir. For uh, this subject, two types of exams, uh, that's the difficulty they are having, sir. 
So uh, why don't we do like this? Uh, by the way, who is talking? Is that a faculty member there? Yes, yes sir. I am Venkatesh, sir. Class teacher for third year CSE, sir. Oh, no, okay. Venkatesh, sir. Yes. <laughs> me, pro me problem in solve it and chala custom it can ninche. Okay. Kada, adi, what we can do is we'll talk to Murthy Garu, but this is how the grading would be done in my class. Okay. Uh, the reason is this is a this is a MOOCs class. Yes, sir. MOOCs class lo there is a online component, right? Yes, sir. Manamu, we have to come up with some kind of an understanding, right? So yes, sir. the the best person to uh, to resolve this issue is probably the uh, Murtigar, Professor Murtigaru, or uh, um, I'm assuming you know Murtigaru, right? From JNTU Kakinada. Yes, sir. So we can talk to him and say, hey, how do you want to tra translate this, right? But I can yes. tell you when I give midterm, the midterm would be given based mm -hmm. on, I don't mind following whenever your midterm is, but my midterm would be done like a I can read the install this open now. book. And okay. it will be done in teams of two. Okay. Sir. That no one can uh, uh, dispute, right? However, we give it, right? So, okay. Uh, what about other colleges? No one, no one raised this question. Are all other colleges okay, or do you have any comments? Sir, good morning, sir. Sir, this is from JNT Kaikland, sir. Hello. Speaking. Sir, uh, this is from JNT Kaikland, sir. Who is speaking? Please state your name. Yeah, my name is Venkatesh Rasar, working uh, research scholar, uh, working with uh, Dr. Asian Chakravarti. Actually, this uh, this related to this mid issue under the schedule. Uh, uh, Murthy sir and Chakravarti sir will have some discussion with you, sir. Later, after that, they will communicate to all colleges. Okay, perfect. So everyone heard that, right? Okay, got it. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Okie dokie. Let's jump into the. But I'm assuming faculty members, you are seeing my whiteboard, right? I want the rosters from all of you, please, by Friday. Okay, Pragati, are you able to hear me now? Pragati, you can put it in the chat if you. I see your audio now, but if you are able to, I'm assuming you are able to hear me. Pragati, can you hear me? Okay. Until until they say okay, let me share my PowerPoint and let's go through the discussion. Perfect. Today all, all of you are able to hear me and all of you are able to chat. Okay. Let me mute all of you again. Muting all of you. Okay. Now the static is gone. Okay. Great. Uh, students, don't worry about all this grading and all that, okay? In my class, all of you will be well. Don't worry about it. Okay. Okay. So I'm jumping into chapter, uh, the next thing here. Ultimately, it's all about arrays. Remember, I kind of already gave you some examples of that. But we'll start doing these things formally. Uh, I gave you a, a quick overview of Java last class. Um, most of the example that we are going to be taking would be in in uh, in Java. So you want to start uh, refreshing your Java knowledge. Okay. So and so today we'll uh, get into arrays, and then if time permits, we'll do linked lists, right? Because these are the kind of things that you'd be analyzing. Uh, and then uh, maybe next class we'll do doubly linked lists. Okay. So, since you already know what the array definition is, um, I don't have to spend too much time on that. But those of you who skipped the programming class, if you want a refresher, 
here is a one minute refresher on what an array is, okay? Sequence collection of variables of all same type, right? So you have an array, pictorially you can see at the bottom of the screen there. Okay, so you have an array A, and the array indices start from zero, right? Remember in computer science, uh, the numbers start from zero. Okay, and then whatever element you store in, a, you store in each of these cells is called an element of the array. Uh, okay. So the length of the array, the length of the array, if I say the length of the array is, uh, is say 100, the index goes from 0 to 99, remember that, right? So if you want to know the length of an array, you simply use the use the function a dot length, it will give you the length of the array, okay? Uh, the good thing about 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 Java as opposed to other languages, right? If you look at C uh, or C++, in programming, when you're programming using the arrays, the programmer has to ensure to keep track of the array boundaries. So whenever we write code, we have to make sure we do not exceed the array boundaries uh, because the system would not check that for you. Okay. How do you create an array, right? So there are different ways of creating an array. So you can see the first way where you're giving an array name and then you're initializing the values of the array. Pretty standard programming, right? Programming 101. The very first programming class you learned, uh, your teacher would have told you these things. Unless you are, you are one of those students like my nephew, who in India, even after six years, he cannot pass the computer science uh, program. So I'm assuming you're all smart students. Okay, let's look at that. And the second way is when you are getting it from the from memory, where you are allocating memory, you say new element type that is the uh, and then the length. So that creates uh, uh, the uh, the array on the heap. Okay. Okay. Now, whenever you create something uh, using the operator new, it's called dynamic memory allocation, right? You probably again learned that uh, in your one of your fundamental classes. So when you create something on a on a heap, you get a pointer to it or a reference to it. Okay, and that reference is what is stored in the array variable. Again, by the way, these things I would go extremely slowly if I'm teaching a programming 101 class. But here, this is just a refresher for you. If I'm going too fast, please say so in the chat and I'll slow down, okay? And don't be shy. If you don't ask questions, then I assume that you know everything and then I'll keep moving fast. So here is an array of characters or object references, right? You can see on the top example here, uh, you have an array where we have stored the characters S, A, M, P, L, E. Okay, so we actually stored the actual characters. Instead of so storing the actual characters, you can use the array elements to store references to the actual objects. So that is what the second element is, right? Where the dots there that you see, those are references. And then they point to the Rene object, Joseph object, Janet object. Imagine, imagine you created a whole bunch of students. Right, you want to keep track of all the student objects. You create an array and then store their references in that array. Okay, let's jump into an example here. So here is a great uh, simple example, Java example. I'm still getting some static. Let me let me mute all of you. There's a way of muting all of you. One second. Okay, I'm muted all. Okay, Pragati is 
I see the video of Pragati. They are listening intently by putting their hands on the chin. Either they are totally lost or <laughs> they say it is too easy, right? Okay, let's move forward, right? Again, don't be shy. If you have questions, ask me. Don't ask, don't tell, right? So, uh, okay. So here is an example of a game entry. Okay, let's look at that. By the way, as I told you beforehand, right? Uh, even my kids think I should not. I know nothing about programming. So keep that in mind. You are you are experts at programming. Okay, but I can teach. Okay. So you have a public class. So you know what a public class means, right? Since I'm looking at public class, uh, what does public mean? Uh, Pragati student with uh, dark blue uh, uh, chunni with a purple bottle in front of her what is a public what does public class mean can you tell me yeah that's the one first first person to almost to the right closer to the door what does public mean go ahead can you speak let me unmute pragati here <coughs> Very first student there. Yep, right, 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 all the way. Yeah, she is the one. That's she is the one. Go ahead. What does public mean there before the class? Don't be shy. You are all very bold these days, right? Can you? Do, I unmuted you. You can come to the mic. Not you, but the but the girl all the way there. There you go. Perfect. We can access them in all packages. Uh, state your name. Chandrika, sir. Okay, speak louder. We can access them in all packages. Okay, cannot hear you. Speak louder and clear. One more time. It's feeling. We can access them throughout all packages. Excellent, excellent. Good. Okay. So you can access them right throughout the system. Okay. If I see video of some other college, I'll start asking them too. Uh, so then what does the game entry have? So what we are doing in this game is right. Look at it. This one, right? Um, it stores the name of a player and her best score so far in a game. Uh, her or his, right? I don't know what game is this. So since you have to store the name, you need to have a name variable, right? And name is a string. That's why you see line two. And it's a name which is private. Private means only the methods of the class can access that. The anything outside of that class cannot see that name. OK, and then you have the score. So you have you need to have a score to keep track of how much they score. We don't know what this game is right yet. OK. So principal excellent, I agree. OK. Notice one thing here. Faculty members, everyone are welcome to put, put their stuff in the chat or speak. OK, it's a collaborative teaching too. OK, so then you have the public game entry. That is the constructor, correct? The same name as the class. So you need two things, right? You need the name of the student you need to pass and then you need to pass the. Score. Once you pass the score, those two parameters, they are assigned to name and score respectively. And then you have access or functions get name and get score. So it will return those things, right? Uh, and then you have the string to string conversion. OK, basically it's returning a string representation of the entry. So it is going to return that. OK, pretty straightforward. Any questions, comments on that? OK. OK, so here is a scoreboard. OK, it is keeping track of all the players and their best scores in an array board. So the elements of the board are objects of class game entry. So remember we are we are discussing arrays here, right? First we created a class. In the previous slide, right? Sorry. 
So you could have, we created a class called game entry where you game entry shows each participant name and score. Okay, on the previous here. And then here you are creating a scoreboard. And the board is an array. And it is sorted by score. Okay, so let's see how this works, right? So you have a class scoreboard. Number of entries you are keeping track of. It is initialized to zero. Remember good programming principles. Always initialize your variables. Okay, and then the board itself is a private to the class. You can see the you can see the private game board. This notation is the array notation, right? And then you are calling it board. Okay, and then you have the constructor where it is going to take the capacity and then you are going to create a board with that capacity and why are you saying new because you are creating it dynamically this is not a static board because you do not know how many players are there right you understand the first two slides is there is there any student in any college who does not understand this slide? Okay. Pretty simple, right? I don't see I don't see anything uh, uh, anything drastically new yet. But if you have a question, put it in chat. Okay. So now, how do you add an entry to that array? An array in the array is a board. Okay. So to add an entry e into an array board at index i, we need to make room for it by shifting forward. Remember, slowly we are getting into the algorithms here, right? It is a sorted array. Remember, we said it is sorted. The scores are stored in a sorted way. So. To add some entry e into the array board at some index i. Okay. So we need to shift shift them, right? Shift the the n minus i entries. Right? Then you add the board i. Then you go up to board n. Okay. So if you look at the first one, the highlighted one here. Let me put it. See this one here. This is where you are adding. Okay. So to add that, you have to make room for it because it's a sorted array, right? That is what this is saying. Okay. Okay. Let me let me continue. Somebody is uh, let me unmute again. Let me mute. Okay, I have muted all everyone again. If you have any question, you can. Okay, so let's see what this is doing. Java example. We are continuing, right? If you go back to the previous slide here. Okay, this this is the code. Okay, you are continuing that code there. Here is what we are trying to do. We are trying to add an array. The context is you have a game board. Okay, and the board is an array. And then each at each place you are storing the score of the participant. And the array is sorted. Okay, so how do you add a new score to the collection? Okay, so you got a new new player, new score. How do you add? So let us see here, right? So you are getting a you have the add that is line 10. Add game entry E because that is the E, right? E is the object. And then the new score is E dot get score. 
Okay. Now, when you want to add that to the score, you have to see. You have to verify the check of the array if the. The board is 100 if the number of entries is uh, 90, it is still less or. This this two line symbol is or symbol or the new score that you got is greater than the board number of entries minus one dot get score, meaning you are putting it in sorted order, right? Got it. So those are the two conditions. I'll increase the font size. I will. I'll do it in a second. Please be quiet. Better? Am I assuming this is better? Yes, sir. Okay. okay, thank you. Let me mute all of you again. So, even to simply add something there, you have to do some checking here. Line 13. Okay. So, how do you get, get to these conditions, right? I mean, it's very easy for me as a teacher to explain on a slide which is already prepared. Hey, these are the conditions you need to put. But I want you to think, right? Are trying to come up with an algorithm. Uh, you have to whiteboard it. You have to do flow charts. Uh, uh, if statement uh, on line 13 uh, does not come out just like that, like magic. OK. The chance you com coming up with the if statement right the first time would be almost zero. Uh, the chance of me coming up with that if statement correctly, even when I do it, the chance of it would be zero for me too. And for your faculty members in the classroom, they root class. Okay, so you don't have to feel afraid of that. No one, no one gets the program right the first time. Okay. But for now, let's assume that these are the conditions, OK? So you have to check because what is the fundamental principle there? Number one, we cannot add a new entry for a, for a an array which is already has a fixed length. That is what this first condition is, right? OK, and then. The new score, if it is greater than board number of entries minus one dot get score. OK. So no score drops from the board that is line four. Now, since you are adding that one, you have to increase the number of entries, right? You added a new score. You have the integer J where number of entries minus one, you are now looking at the J. Then there's some kind of a while loop because you need to do some shifting of the entries. Remember, since it is since it is uh, sorted, you have to shift everything, shift right one. That is what this while loop is doing here, right? And then at board J, you assign E. Okay, so now this entire piece of logic. Is what this visual diagram is showing you. Right. So you have 0, 1 to n. This is the index i, right? But index i low, there is an entry there, right? Correct. So if you have some entry there, you have to move it to i plus 1 to make room. When you move this one, since it's sorted, everything moves right automatically. OK, now I'm looking at guide here, a whole bunch of students there. Uh, raise your hands if you understand what I just told you. No one understood that, right? Or you're not able to hear me. I'm looking at the picture of guide. Raise your hand. Visually here. 
Okay, I see one student trying to raise the hand, but he was combing his hair. Okay, so uh, let me ask you in a different way. Okay, uh, explain this slide to me. Okay, let me I let me select a boy this time, right? Uh, on on the boy side, one of you try to explain visually what is happening here. Since I'm looking at the guide video, one of you, I want a volunteer from guide. I'm unmuting guide. Why I'm not able to unmute you? Can you unmute yourself, guide? So visual, uh, I want I want a student to explain what is happening visually there. It's a pretty simple concept. Forget the fact it is in Java, okay? Just just this is where I want you to think algorithmically, right? What are we trying to do here? Okay, so let me go. That is the process now. Check it out. Is the new entry? Is the new entry? Okay, yeah. let me go back. Let me stop sharing here. I'll go to the whiteboard. New whiteboard. Okay, so I got a we have an array, right? How do we draw an array here? So difficult to draw an array here. Let me put it in a. Let me try to draw an array here. OK, array, array. And then lines, lines. OK, good. OK. This is really bad, OK? So I'll try to simulate an array as best as I can. Okay. Let's assume that. Okay. So let's assume that. Uh, I mean, remember these are names, right? We are actually name and, and score. Let's assume score, right? So let's say I have 20 here. Uh, how did I get the number? Oh, I just typed number and it came, I think. Okay. I have 30. I have, I have 40. Okay. Now I'm trying to add. I'm trying to add 25. Correct? 25. I'm trying to add 25 to that and it's a sorted array. Okay. So now there's no Java here. It's all whiteboard, right? So tell me in plain English terms. Unless you don't want to speak in English, Telugu is okay, Hindi is okay. Long as is a translator who can translate from Tamil and Kannada to English for me. How do I add 25 to that array? Hello. What are the things that we need to? I mean, th these are these are really key concepts for this core course. Okay. So, uh, by the way, it, it doesn't have to be guide only. Anyone can answer. Okay. I'm not showing you a piece of code here, right? Because no one gives you a piece of code. They give you a problem to solve in the industry, right? So what is my first thought process? Faculty members, you can help me to here. So I have an array I need to add. So what are my thought processes here? Here. For, you know, what, what would I be thinking when I look at that when I say if I want to add an element to an array, I know I know the array by definition has bounds, right? Array has lower bound and upper bound. 
Okay. So that means before I add an element, first I have to say, hey, make sure array is not full. Correct? Agree? How many of you agree? Raise your hands. I see the guide video. Do you agree with that? Correct yeah. type and my space bar is not working. OK, you agree to that. Uh, other colleges, you'll also get your opportunity. OK, I'll involve all my students. Don't worry. OK, OK. Array, OK, I'll say array not full. Make sure array is not full. OK. I'll say if not full. OK, then what do I do? Then what do I do? That is the key element, right? That is the key element. To give you 50, 50 rupees for lunch. <laughs> okay, 50 rupees is on me, Andy. You can you can deduct it from my compensation. You have to compare the key element with the elements in the RSS. You have to compare, correct. So if not full, you tab tap on just not tell you, but I'll say, okay. If not full, you say compare. Compare, you gotta, we'll, we'll hard code it, right? Sometimes when I explain it to business owners, a lot of times, a lot of times in my line of work, uh, business owners have already on taro uh, in organizations. So I'll say compare 25 with, with in the RSA. first element in the array, right? Yes, Correct? Yes, sir. Okay, first element in the array is 20. Okay. Okay, JNT Kakinada. Okay, let's let's stop there. Now let's go to Chaitanya. We'll come up with a solution collaboratively here, okay? Okay, Chaitanya, can you turn on your video? I want to see your students. I wish I could. Ah, there you go. Okay, hello, Chaitanya. Now let's let's pick. Uh, what do we do next? Compare 25 with first element of the array, okay? What do we do next? Tell me. Compare 25 to 30, sir. No, you're, you're skipping a whole bunch of steps there. Okay, so algorithm. How do you what do you write there? You say there are only two options here, right? When you compare, you have to come when you compare what happens. You say if if 25 greater than 20. Then go to go to next element, right? Yes, sir. Correct. Okay. Yes, sir. So index now will have the value. Index will now initially kada if not full compare first element, right? Kada index in tikada equal to zero. Sorry. Is the one second, one second, one second, one second. Index one. Okay. Somebody, somebody is talking, but. <laughs> The chance now, the chance to shine is. Okay, I have, un I have muted everyone. I am unmuting only Chaitanya. Others, please be keen listeners. Okay, so then you go to index one. Okay. Okay, now we know that 25 is, uh, is less than 30, right? Yes, sir. Okay, now compare 25 to 30. Compare 25 and 30. Okay. 
now what happens so now 25 has to now we know come when you compare you know it is put in index a of i i call it a a1 correct yes sir agree yes sir okay now to 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 accomplish that if i want to call this the third big step miglin one is sub steps ankunte now now what do we do let's take uh, that's good job chaitanya so faculty member has to give some money for lunch for all of you too that's why you know why i tell you i carry a bag of kit kats and cadburys and all in my classes see students can and take them how to take bribes i guess unless you give me something i won't answer type of a thing teaching you bad habits i guess okay so now let's see jntu guide guide already answered kakinara answered how about i give uh, J, jntu k dot mt are you ready turn on your video now <laughs> video is turned on. I know JNTU V promptly turned on the video. JNTU V is always at the forefront. They are. I had such a fun time with them last time I taught. Okay, but JNTU V, I'm bypassing you for now. I want to give an opportunity to Lendi Institute of Engineering and Technology here. Lendi, go ahead. Come on. Hopefully, we can see you on the video. Somebody answer. What do we do next? Lendi, I can you hear? Okay, Lendi, can you hear me? Can you come on? Is it looks like your video is on and your audio is on? Oh, JNTUK dot MT is coming online, huh? Okay, that's fine too. Don't take the screen away from me, just answer. I can't see you guys. Okay, Lendi is not able to talk yet. Okay, let's go to uh, Pragati has answered in the past, so I want to include others. Uh, Sri Shivani College of Engineering. Your video is on. If you come on the video, if anybody wants to talk, don't be shy. Okay. The more you interact, the more fun it becomes, right? Okay. They are also not coming on board yet. The reason I want to see them on video is that that way I also get a sense of the students and how many of them are there and are they sleeping at their desk or are they listening? Okay. What about sentence Chirala? They don't have the video. Okay. Uh, SVE CW, we already. Okay, why don't we give opportunity to JNTV now? There. Yeah, okay. JNTV, here is your chance. From Chakravarti to everyone. A2 gets 30. A2 gets 30. What do you mean A2? Yeah, A2 gets 30, but before you do 30, what happens to the 40 then? Chaitanya to everyone. It's uh, Chaitanya said A2 gets 30. Yes, A2 gets 30, but how do you move 40? Okay, so let me put here, let's take Chaitanya thing, right? A2. gets 30. So in order for
if A2 gets 30, then 40 gets overwritten, right? Yes, principal HM says to everyone, 25 is less than 30, so 30 will be placed in A2. I agree with you. Okay, if 30 has to be placed in A2, then what happens to 40, which is in A2 right now? Let me put it here, right? My question. underscore HM is saying 40 will move to A3. But how do you show that algorithmically? First of all, how do you know that in A3 there is 40? What if there is nothing there? I'm, I'm turning the question around, right? You are saying 40 will go to A3, ag agreed. But how do I know whether there is any value there or not? What if it's empty? Or if you take my argument one more step further, um, because the rest of the array, thirty is less than forty, so a three gets forty. Okay, so the forty. So in the process, what have we done here? Uh, we compare the array length. See now, now things are coming up. See collectively we are solving. We compare the array length. Correct, right? You can follow the chat, students. I have my chat open, right? So if I start a new whiteboard here, so we have to somehow. So what we have learned, we have to do a. We have to potentially. Do a right before any insertion can happen. That's number one we have learned. Okay. We have to constantly keep track of array length. Now, if you imagine, now here is where the trick comes, right? The, the, the efficiency of the algorithm, right? So if I have a, And only the first 10 elements are populated. And then you are inserting one element into that. Okay, so how many right shifts? we have to do. Do you understand the question? First 10 elements are populated. How many right shifts we have to do? Uh, minimum and maximum, okay? Who wants to answer that question? Faculty members are welcome to answer that too. I don't know the answer. I'm
Somebody putting something in chat or they want to talk? Minimum is, oh, okay, JNT Kakinada said minimum is zero. You're right. Maximum N minus previous elements. What is previous? What do you mean by maximum N minus previous elements? So minimum zero means the element being inserted is the is the maximum value. You can't see the whiteboard completely, but hopefully you get the idea, right? Is the maximum value, right? That's why there is no there is no right shift. But if you had to potentially put it, the very first element A0, then I had to shift all the other elements, right? Now to shift the other elements, if you had to do one at a time, because remember, according to the logic that uh, people typed here, uh, if I go to the previous page here, previous page, unte, I think new one, no, no, no. there's a previous page where we had the array, right? Where did that go? I think I erased it. Okay. So um, if I have to put the element in the very first one, all the 10 elements have to shift. Right? Maximum value is 10. You got it. Okay. Now, that is the standard. That is the that that is how we do that, right? So now if you look at the remember some madam was talking about time complex. Looking at the complexity of the algorithm, right? So you know the bounds of the complexity in terms of iterations. I'm quantifying it, right? Zero and ten. Okay. Now it's a sorted array, right? Now uh, you understand, students. Any questions on that? So that's all the Java example that I was showing was showing you. It was not showing you anything more than what I just said, right? But before you write that code, typically what we do is like just like how we have written it on the whiteboard collectively here, we come up with this algorithm. What we have come up is an algorithm. And it won't be, it won't. I say, hey, I'll make you work in teams. Because when we, when we do this in the industry, when we are coming up with these algorithms, right? Typically, we draw nice uh, flow charts, how these things flow. Okay. And then uh, there'll be some smart aleck in the classroom who says, no, no, what you have done, Pratap, is, uh, is inefficient. Let me show you a simplified way. So there'll be some brainstorming. And, and I, I don't agree to him because I think I'm smart, right? So I say, no, no, what you said is not correct. Then I'll come up with some other idea. So that is how the algorithms come come out. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, let's see. Time now is what? 10.38. So we have 20 more minutes, right? Okay. I'll not take any break. But beginning next class onwards, I usually get a, I give a five, five minute tea break at the end of every hour. Okay, which one was that? Arrays. Okay. I think I'm still sharing my slide. Are you able to see my slides? Oh, maybe I'm not sharing it. Let me share my slides here. Okay. So you can see, remember in, we talked about how we have to check for the length of the board. That is line 13. Okay. Um, 
OK, so that is the that is the essence of that. So I will not. OK. Now that is adding. Now what about removing the entry? When you are removing something, then you have to shift left, right? Correct. You have to shift right and shift left. When you are adding, you are shifting right. When you are removing, you are shifting left. OK. Removing and returning the highest score. Pretty straightforward example. Uh, how many of you? Um, the reason I'm sharing these things is right. This is something that you can code. You can actually open up your uh, Java, uh, copy paste this code, and see how it works. Okay. Let me close this slide deck here. OK. Let's talk about. Help in the chat there. OK, let's talk about linked list, right? This is real fun stuff, right? Okay. What do we mean by linked list, right? You already know from Java. Okay, or standard programming 101 basics where they don't teach any language, but they give the concepts, right? It has two parts to it, right? Every entry has two parts to it. Right? One is the element itself, and the next the next entry is the pointer to the next next element in the linked list. Okay. So you have the head. So how do you how do we represent this one? So here is a singly linked list code, right? You have a static class. Okay. Um, node. Okay. Node has two things. One one is the E as the element line four. And then you have the node E next. That means the subsequent node. That's how you declare the linked list, right? And then if you look at line six, that is a public where that is a constructor, right? So you have a constructor. Which returns the element, whatever element you are trying to get. And then you have line 11 public node E get next. That means it's going to go to the next node and return the next node. And then you have get and set. These are the standard functions which go with object oriented languages, right? Uh, if you want to set the next value, then you have the set function. Get and set functions are pretty straightforward. Okay. So you can see there you have a singly linked list. Uh, if you could look at line 15. Okay. So you have initially null, null, everything has been. And then you have the accessor functions, right? You're returning the size of the linked list. If the, if the list is empty or not, there is a Boolean function is empty, right? So then you are looking at the first element. You're only returning the first element. And the last element somewhere here you should have a insert. Right, you want to insert into a. Link list, how do you do the insertion into a link list is what this picture is showing you. OK, so when you have a link list. There are many options, right? One is. You can insert at the very beginning. You, you can. Insert One of the primary things that we always keep track of is we always want to know what is the head of the linked list, right? Because that is the starting point. So whenever I'm 
trying to add something, I know that I have to manipulate the head. The head pointer has to has to be assigned at the right place. If you look at the second picture, their pictorial picture there, right? The newest is being added before the first element, so the head has to move. That is what is being reflected in the in the last slide, last diagram there. C diagram C. Okay. has to move right that is what this shows okay now how do you add that it shows how to add the first element and how to add the last element nothing again absolutely ridiculously simple code there right uh, a high school student can write this code okay now when you want to remove same thing again Right. One of the things that you're learning from this is right. You can you come up. How do you come up with the algorithm? Right. The way you come up with the algorithm is look at the pictures here, A, B and C. On the whiteboard collectively in the previous example. And I know the steps. Once I know the steps, then it becomes easy to put it in code, right? OK. OK, so you're removing the element and. Uh, remove and return the first element. If there is nothing to remove, remember, you always have to check for condition. As a rule of thumb, when you're writing code in industry, um, the validation code, I do not know if in your programming class you have been taught about validations, right? It, if I have to apply like an 80-20 rule, that like for example, in the array example, checking for array bounds. In the linked list example, making sure the list is not empty, things like that. Okay, and and uh, checking for valid values. If it's expecting a string, you write a numeric digit, you should throw out an error. Okay, so most of the validation code is where you're for, uh, that is what distinguishes a good programmer from a bad programmer. Good programmers write terrific validation code. Okay, so keep that in mind as you go through this class. Okay, removing pretty straightforward, nothing, nothing to teach there. Okay, that is the doubly linked list, right? You know what doubly linked lists are from your programming class. You have a, oh, I didn't mean to say that one, delete slide. Give me a second, please. Okay. So when you say double link, what do you mean by that? As the picture shows here, right? There are two links. One pause, we call it the left pointer, and one is called the right pointer. Okay. So when you have doubly linked lists, first of all, in your in your lang programming language class, you'd have learned, right? What is the advantage of a doubly linked list? You can go left. Okay. Can somebody give me an example of where something like this could be used based on the programming that you have done so far in your earlier classes? Uh, where do you think a doubly linked list can come in handy? Let's start with Aditya. Aditya didn't get a chance today. So we, we, can you give me a real life example?
Okay. What about uh, what about Chaitanya? Anybody from Chaitanya? While Aditya is thinking. In an example of where a doubly linked list can be used. The man in the checkered red shirt. I can't hear you. You should tell him he's looking so handsome. He should go join movies and stuff. Learning about doubly linked clips, you know. Where can we use it? Arjun, do double. What, what did you say? Arjun, D U I Abhi Singh. Abhi. Okay. Oh, Arjuna, Abhimanyu. Okay. So there's some interesting. Let me mute the uh, Chaitanya. Chaitanya is generating doubt. It's interesting. Somebody put something here saying um, this is an interesting application of W link lists are trees. Okay. Now tree also look, looks very abstract to me. What is it? What is a real life example of a tree structure? Any practical application? Yeah, trees agreed. Doubly linked lists are trees to traverse the tree. Our Aditya Engineering College said railway reservation. Uh, Railway reservation, okay. Uh, give me an example in railway reservation how it can be how it can be used. If your audio is working, go ahead and talk on audio. I'll unmute you. Okay, Aditya. Adi Adi faculty member Chipina answer Adi. <coughs> So how do you okay Jane in Kakina in trains, yeah? Or in railway reservation, how do you use it? Or in trains, how do you use it? Madam can speak. So good morning, sir. Good morning, ma'am. Um, maybe to find the seat seat reservation in the railway application. To find the seat reservation. Yes, sir. If it in the case of a third call or in the premium third call, we'll be seeing for the preference and we'll be. in the case of a preference. Okay, okay. I, so you're saying in seat reservations you need to have a doubly linked list. That's what you're saying, right? Yes, sir. Actually, so, we'll be having preferences in the seat reservation for the okay. senior citizen or for the person with the disabled one. Okay. So okay. they'll be allowed. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, that's a good example. I like that. Okay, thank you, that's thank you, madam. Thank you. Same thank you, student, that's why I told you, right? It's a collaborative teaching, right? I'm going to involve the faculty members too. So that way they don't fall asleep, right? Okay. Thank you, ma'am.
Okay, good. Let me mute all of you. Okay. So when when we are the reason I I stopped there and asked for real life example is right. So one of the key things about data structures and algorithms is right. We should know what is the right data structure to use to. What is the applicability of that, right? So it doesn't fall out of uh, sky all of a sudden, you know, say, oh, I'm going to use doubly linked list. OK, so when you are coming up with the algorithms. The out of the brainstorming discussion. An answer, right? When you are doing real life programming and coming up with algorithm design and data structures. OK, great. Uh, OK, let me go to. Now you can see the same thing, right? When we have a data structure, I know the modus operandi for us is, hey, how do we insert an element? What is the algorithm to insert an element? What is the algorithm to delete an element? And what is the process to update something? Right now. Let me stop here and ask you another question to the students, right? Uh, of all the elements in the array. If you had used a, a linked list. Would that have been more efficient than in the previous case? Let me repeat the question again. When we inserted an element, Chapandi, somebody has a mic. Yes, sir. The linked list is a little more efficient than arrays. If linked list is more efficient than arrays, why do we need to use arrays at all? Because in arrays, uh, accessing can be done randomly, but in linked list, you have to access sequentially. In linked list, you see that good point. So you can see the difference there, right? It's not like just. Linked link lists are better. And in some contexts, arrays are better, correct? In, in arrays, you have to shift the entire uh, positions right, right words also. But in linked list, it's no need. Yes, you have to start the two nodes. Correct. So then I asked you a question. If if sorting and shifting comes into play, linked lists are better. Agreed. Are linked lists always better than arrays? Is my question. Not in all cases. Some some cases. In worst cases, both are equal. Okay. So where are where are arrays useful? Where we don't have to worry about linked lists. When you want to access them, when random access is required more. In computer science, wherever you want to randomly access some element, then arrays would give you a much faster way of accessing the elements. Perfect. Okay, somebody is trying to talk there next to you. Okay, I cannot I cannot see you. Okay, ask the cameraman to focus on your face. <laughs> okay, now now I can see you. On no, he is only focusing on the wonderful girl behind you. <laughs> correct, correct. Good. These are all good points. So when you are when you are learning these things, right, these are all the type of questions that you should be asking yourself, right? There's a reason why all these things exist, right? I'm trying to basically make you think. Okay, that that is the purpose of these questions. There, that's excellent. Now I know we have one more minute or something like that, but okay. Here is the exercise, formal exercise, right? Exercise is nothing but reinforcing of your concepts, right? So I put the chapters there. I want you to go write 
the Java code that is already there, modify it and make them work. Okay, I showed you. Let's do an analysis of complexity analysis of this code. Okay, in terms of time efficiency, in terms of storage, and all that. Got it? Everyone understands the assignment? Is there anyone who doesn't understand the assignment? So, all you have to do is take what we have learned here, execute them, bring up your Java compilers, and all of that stuff. Make sure the code works because you are going to be analyzing your own code in terms of time efficiency, storage efficiency, and so on. Okay. Okay, somebody said, Guide said if array size is less, array is preferred. You are absolutely right. If array size is, is small, array size is preferred, right? Much faster to navigate through that. Okay, Chaitanya understood the assignment. What about all the other colleagues? I'm assuming you understood. All you have to do is take the, there's a whole bunch of code, there's a whole bunch of examples there. We took we we discussed arrays and we discussed linked lists. The code is there visually also. All you have to do it take the code sample from there, make it first. Do you have any questions? Okay, as I stated in the beginning of the class. Faculty members, please collect rosters and send them to me by tomorrow. And students, if you do not enroll in the community by. OK, so somebody is saying these topics are in our syllabus 3 to. D A A J N T U K. Yes, all these topics are there. You're right. So are we in three two DA or are we in three one D? I don't I don't know. Okay. Um students you have to go enroll in the community and I will see you on Monday. Mm -hmm.